Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Pauline. Welcome. All right, I'm going to um, start my little intro and then we'll introduce Pauline. OK, so my name is Christy and um, I'm the Small Business Center Librarian here at the San Francisco Public Library. This is Tamayan Pin with Pauline McKay of Handmade by P. McKay. Um, our department is located on the fourth floor of the main library. And so please visit us if you come down to Civic Center. Uh, let's see. Um, you can email us at bizsitetech at sfpl.org. So if you have any reference questions having to do with small business, personal finance, investing, um, even cooking, gardening, those are in our subject areas, please feel free to email us or you can call us at 415-557-4488. Uh, we also have a department newsletter um, and you can sign up for it here. Uh, here is our land acknowledgement. I'm just gonna read the first and last sentences. The San Francisco Public Library acknowledges that we occupy the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramaytush Ohlone peoples who are the original habit inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. Um, we recognize to respectfully honor Ramaytush peoples, we must, we recognize to respectfully honor Ramaytush peoples, we must embrace and collaborate meaningfully to record indigenous knowledge and in how we care for San Francisco and all its people. Um, I wanted to point out that because this is um, Filipino American History Month, that there is a Filipino American Center on the third floor of the main library. Um, and there's a lot of books that circulate. That means you can check them out. There's also a Filipino American Center with really great reference materials, and it's managed by Abraham Acasio, our Filipino American Center librarian. Um, also this month, uh, we have a lot of events. I just wanted to quickly go through these. Um, there's a movie showing at Ocean View uh, Branch Library on Wednesday, October 12th called When the Storm Fades. On um, Wednesday, October 12th, there's a, a panel, Panay Lit, and we have readers Danny Quintos, Barbara Jean Reyes, Jen Soriano, and Isabel Yet. On uh, Thursday, October 13th, we are showing a film at the Richmond branch in the Richmond district of San Francisco. It's called Yellow Rose. Um, and then the big event this month is our two-day uh, Filipino American International Book Festival, and um, it's taking place here at the main library on Saturday and Sunday, October 15th and 16th, and it's all day. And on the lower level, there will be uh, vendors and author signings and some booths from community organizations. So I hope you can join us. And then here are some small business programs that are coming up. On Tuesday, we're having a Start Your Own Business in, presented in Spanish. On Wednesday, we have our book club meeting. The book is Everything is Figure Outable. On Wednesday, October 19th, um, we have um, Dennis Yu, who is a SEO expert. He will live audit your small business website. So if you have a small business website that isn't attracting as many customers as you would like, please join us, put your website in the chat, and he will go through it in real time and let you know how to improve it. Really good. And then on Tuesday, October 25th, we have um, an overview of Reference Solutions Database, which is really good for business research. Um, so during our program, you can type your questions in the chat and Pauline can answer them at the end. Um, we've also enabled auto transcription if you need to, um, if you need closed captioning on your screen. And, um, okay. So um, welcome Pauline McKay. Um, I first saw Pauline and her jewelry at Undiscovered Market last year. Um, there's one coming up too on October 22nd. So please go to that. It's gonna be um, huge. It's gonna be amazing. It's in South America. But I first saw Pauline and her jewelry last year, but I kept seeing her at different markets like at uh, Capra Gardens, Vistaha and Sunday Streets. And her table always stood out to me from the others because of her visual merchandising, as you can see in this photo, and um, just her, her colorful jewelry, her playful jewelry that I'm like in, obsessed with. I'm actually wearing a pair of her earrings right now. Um, but anyway, I'm so glad that she decided to do this demo for us. And I'm so glad that she's here today. Uh, to talk with us. Um, so welcome, Pauline. 
Hello, thank you so much for having me. I am very honored um, to be doing this demo. Thank you. So before we get started and show your the demo that you've prepared, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? Yeah, so um, I basically make um, polymer clay jewelry. And um, how I started with that is I'm, absolutely obsessed with accessories. I feel like they make the outfit and earrings are one of my favorite accessories. And so I, I collected so many earrings, especially large earrings, but I found that they were super heavy. Um, so I started experimenting with polymer clay and um, I found out I could make really big pieces, but very light on the ears. And so I just started making them for myself for fun and then people would stop me and was like oh where'd you get your earrings and then I'd be like oh I actually made them and so um like during I see I started this in August of 2019 and um so I started giving them as presents and then I was like running out of material so I started people started offering to pay and then after that it basically just started and I just started a business with that so that's great so it's not been that long I thought you might have started longer ago but it was only in 2019 that you started well when did you start selling your jewelry I started selling it um like kind of unofficially um during that time and then in January of 2021 that's when I uh, published my website and um, but a little bit before that, I was doing some markets, but my official website started on January 2021. Wow, yours is a very um, young business. Yes, I had no idea it would kind of um, grow the way it did. And so I'm, I was very surprised about that. <laughs> well, your, your, your work is great. I love it. I already have lots of your pieces and I'm just going to keep collecting them. Um, so um, what inspired you to make jewelry representing Filipino food and culture? Because I know you, you've made rings that look like pancit and, you know, some of, you know, the Kamayan pin that you're going to demonstrate, um, you know, is, is a Filipino tradition. So why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, what inspired me to make yeah. jewelry, I'm sorry, my dog's barking. <laughs> um, what inspired me to make jewelry is I think food is like something that brings people together and for me I wanted to make something that represents myself and my identity and I mean why not wear food as an accessory I think it was super fun to do that and I think it also brings people together when they see especially Filipino people together when they see um, food that's relating to the culture and also other people who aren't from Filipino background can learn about it too because San Francisco in the Bay Area there's like a number of Fili a, a huge Filipino population and so there's a number of non-Filipino people who know the food and it's so fun to see that when I have like a market they know about it and so I think it just brings lots of people together and it also represents like a little bit of me which is kind of what I want in my business I want you know pieces of me to, to be represented. Yes, it is very special. Um, honestly, uh, the first piece I bought of yours was the uh, Pancit Canton ring. It's because my grandmother had a bolt that looked just like the, the ring that you made. And literally like an hour after I saw the Instagram post about it, I, on my lunch break, I, I ran over to Kappa Gardens and bought that ring. And I was just like, I couldn't stop looking at it. It just reminded me of my grandmother and my family and the cooking. And so it's very grounding for me to look at that ring. And that's actually, that's how, what your jewelry means to me. So that's why I love it so much. Oh, that's amazing. And that's actually really what I, I want. And that like really, was really touching to, to hear about that. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> well, thank you for creating these pieces. So I think this is a good um, time to, to show your demo. So I'm going to get that ready. All right. Yeah. So um, I guess I could talk a little bit about the Kamayan, which is like, basically eating with your hands and it's a celebratory meal where you have a layout of banana leaves and then basically have a feast and you have rice and barbecue egg mango all on the table and then you you gather around with people and eat together 
Yes. And so this is like a pre-colonial um, way of eating as well. Yes, thank you for explaining that to people who don't know what Kamayan is. All right, let's watch your video now. Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining me in my Kamayan tutorial. So here is my little workstation and I'm prepping all the stuff that we need. So here's a list of materials and tools that you will need. And these are all accessible in your local art stores and craft stores like Michael's and Joann's and even Blick and Flack. Alright, now let's get started. So this green ball of clay that I have, um, I basically mixed it with a few different types of Sculpey clay, and that's the Primo Sculpey clay that I have over on the top left side. I mix some green, browns, and a little bit of orange. And I'm flattening it up so I can put it into my pasta maker, which is my Atlas 150. But it's not necessary, you can just roll it out until you get a certain thickness. So for me, I like to use a number two setting, which means it's a 3.3 millimeter thickness. And that's basically how I want the base thickness to be. So now we're gonna use a clay cutter to get the base shape. to put it in a little ceramic towel so we can bake that later in the oven. Next we have the rice. And again, I'm doing the same exact first steps um, with a flattening of the clay at 3.3 millimeters, the number two setting. And for this one, I wanna double it up and fold it. And now I'm going to use a small cookie cutter that I got from Michael's to get the rice shape. The rice bowl shape. So I'm going to pinch it and round it out. And then I'm going to use a feather wire brush to get the grain details. So it looks like grains of rice. And I also use a rubber brush to do that as well. Uh, the perfect combo is a rubber brush and a feather wire brush tool. Mm, yum, it's starting to look like a little mountain of rice. Now it's time for our fried garlic bits. So I take this orangey brown clay mix that I made and I roll it out into a really, really thin coil. All right, and now we take our X-Acto knife and cut a really tiny piece like this. I love fried garlic with my java rice. Lots of fried garlic. And there you have it. Our little java rice. Now it's time for our barbecue. For this one we have a little bit of a lighter brown. 
For this one, I like to put it on the number 5 setting, which is a 1.5 millimeter thickness. And I cut it into strips. And now I am going to fold it up and put it onto my needle tool, like so. So now I'm going to pinch the clay together into a rectangular shape. And then I'm going to get my clay sculptural tool and push it down so I can make it look layered like little strips of me. Now it's time for our barbecue stick fitting. And these sticks are just little toothpicks that I cut into pieces. And that looks good. Ooh, now it's time for our salted egg. So here I'm rolling the white clay into a tiny ball. And now I'm making that ball into an oval shape, just like a hard boiled egg. And now I'm getting a little pinch of the yellow clay and rolling it into a tiny ball for the yolk. Flatten it and then test it out. That looks good. So now we're going to get liquid sculpy glue. That's the bacon bond. And then put a little dab on there and then put it onto the white oval there we go eggy last but not least the mango so this one we're gonna roll it up into an overall mango shape And then we're going to cut it in half. Again, shaping it a little bit more to look like a mango. My favorite part, mango slices. When my mom and my grandma taught me how to do this when I was a kid with a real mango, my mind was blown. Yay, now that the mango is complete, we have our full Kamayan set, and it's time to glue everything to the base. So I'm removing the wooden stick because I do not want to bake it at a high fire in the oven. So we're going to take our soft pastel and brush it a little bit on the barbecue to give it that charred look.
All right, now that the final touches are complete, it is time to bake. So for the baking process, I just use my home oven and I bake it for 15 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it is baked and cooled, we glue the barbecue stick back. And now we're going to finish it off with polyurethane varnish. Sometimes I use clear nail polish for this process and that is to give it the glossy look. So now we glue in the hardware. So you could either use a pin back if you want a pin. Or you can use an alligator clip if you want a hair clip. So in this case, I want a hair clip, so I'm going to use the alligator clip. So now we take it and glue it to the Kamayan base. And there you have it, we have a Kamayan hair clip. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. I'm so honored to do this. And happy Filipino American History Month. See you next time. Okay, I love that video. <laughs> Such a great job, Pauline. Thank you so much for making that video for us. Oh, absolutely. It was actually my first time recording a video tutorial. <laughs> so it was a, everything was a first. I was, um, I had a lot of fun making and editing the video too. And I learned a lot and it actually also inspired me to make more videos. Yay! I would love to watch more of your videos. You could create a YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> oh, someone put some um, star eyes in the chat. So everyone in the um, everyone here, please let us know what you think of her, her her video. So what I liked. Oh, I better turn down the volume on this other video. Oh, I think it's okay. Can you hear any um, reverb? I can hear fine. Just okay. a little. Um, let me turn that off. I'll be right back. Oh, thank you so much for all the people who are commenting. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so what I liked a lot was um, seeing all your techniques. And I loved how you created textures on everything, like on the um, rice, using those two brush, brushes and on the meat and, and like adding the char to the meat and then making a glaze. I mean, there's all these layers and it just creates a lot of dimension for such a small piece. It's so dimensional. And I think that's why I love your, your work so much because I can take off my glasses and like really just look at it for a long time because there's so many details. And yeah, so there are people sharing um, their comments in the chat. Yeah, thank you for the feedback. And next time I make a video, I'll definitely work on the volume. It was my first time doing a voiceover narration. And I also have like a very soft voice. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's it's good to hear some people's feedback on that. Yeah, you did a great job. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing more of your videos. So I just have um, like one or two more questions for you. Um, so what is your favorite part about being a small business owner and designer? 
So one of my favorite parts about being a small business owner and designer is I have full control of what I can do and what I can make. And, um, and that's like really fun because I can experiment and do whatever I want to. Um, and, and I get to also do, meet a lot of other cool creatives doing like a lot of small events. And um, I, yeah, I, I really enjoy that. Do you um, keep up with them? Like other than seeing them at markets, do you like hang out with the other creatives that you meet at the markets? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've also have actually spoken to other people about doing future collaborations on things, which I'm very excited about. Um, and it's also really fun to see the same people like buying my things over again, like loyal customers. <laughs> That's it's like super awesome. And I'm really honored. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> um, yay. It's so sweet. I love that. <laughs> Thanks for showing us your piece, Angela. That was really cool. Yay. I'm wearing my earrings too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, your, your fan base will surely grow, I think, over the years. Um, your stuff is so good. Um, so where are you going to be um, this month and in the for the holidays? Do you have any uh, shows planned? Yeah, so um, actually doing um, an event with Angela in November. Nice. <laughs> and, um, but the more recent ones this month uh, for Phil Filipino American History Month, we have a no uh, the Noise Pop Block Party in Mission. Um, that's happening October, the Saturday, I think that's October 16th. Um, and that's from noon to six. And then Undiscovered is my other big event, which is on October 22nd. And that's gonna be a really big one. I can't wait to see all the other vendors too. It's always an amazing turnout. Yeah, big shout out to Cultivate Labs for putting that together. It's a yes. huge production. I think they work with Soma Filipinas. I think Capital Gardens is involved. I think this year from the website, I could see that it's gonna be even bigger. So um, I have that day off. I'm going to spend the whole day there. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. And also um, I'm going to have a lot of new pieces. Like I actually have them here. I have Filipino spaghetti. Yeah. Um, I have little croc gibbets with punset on there. It's going to be featured at Undiscovered. And I'm also going to have, it's the first time I'm going to have my own tent with my logo on it. And it's like a big 10 by 10. So it's going to be, um, really interesting and also really fun because I've never had a big booth with my logo so oh my god I'm gonna be there like right when you guys open I'll try not to buy everything though <laughs> oh that's so great I'm glad to hear that I put the link to undiscovered in the chat so everyone if you can make it on Saturday October 22nd uh, look for Pauline's booth or um, tent and um, yeah check her out and check out everyone else um, does anyone have any questions? Oh, someone did write, have you ever sold at SJ San Jose Made? I actually haven't done any San Jose events yet, but I've been meaning to. Um, and if you also, if you have an Instagram and um, if you could DM me about that, I would definitely love to look into it. Oh yeah, cool. Um, and does everyone know how to find here? Let me put your website in the in the chat too so that people can look at your your website because um i love looking at your designs on there too so there's pauline's website um any other questions for her thank you for joining us today um you guys you got so a special treat to see her her amazing demo all right so i don't see any um so again pauline thank you for doing this this was such a good oh wait there is another question um, can you tell us about the first piece you ever made? Yeah, question. so, okay, one of the first piece I made um, was a keychain, and it was a really thick, like, half circle clay piece, but it was since um, I didn't really know what I was doing at, at first, it, like, broke easily, <laughs> it, it didn't, it wasn't as sturdy as I thought it would be, but that's what allowed me to experiment more and I found out that Sculpey Primo is actually um, one of the sturdiest 
I've worked with. Sculpey Primo, is that the type of clay? That's a type of clay. Sculpey Primo is a type of clay. Um, and I usually, for the sturdiest, I usually um, bake it at 260 for 15 260 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. Okay. Does, um, I can ask Angela to unmute. I'm wondering, does Angela make uh, similar pieces? Angela, if you want, you can unmute yourself and tell us about your work. Oh, I, I actually don't make pieces, um, oh. but I wish. I, I just love going to craft fairs and meeting people like Pauline. And I was just organizing some of them for a craft fair in November. That's what Pauline was mentioning earlier. Oh, great. Um, if you don't mind, could you share the link in the chat for that fair? We're, uh, we just started looking for vendors. So if you, great. If you have any other favorites, let me know. OK, great. I'll, um, I'll promote that, too, on my Instagram. OK, thanks for sharing, Angela. Thank you. Pauline, will you ever have any, like, courses where we can maybe learn to be earring makers? <laughs> um, well, now that I've done this workshop and I um, did the video uh, tutorial, I'm thinking of starting a YouTube channel. I also have a TikTok, but I just never made a TikTok before. Um, so I definitely want to find time to do more workshop videos. That's awesome. I would definitely watch. <laughs> you know, my um, the person who does our um, website audits every month, uh, Dennis Hugh, he really recommends TikTok, especially for creatives. He says that the reach is really, really good on TikTok. So, um, you know, he would probably recommend, you know, utilizing your TikTok account. I mean, I don't know personally, but he is an expert and he actually wrote a book about TikTok for marketing. So it is a yeah. great a great channel for people like you, I think. Well, anyway. That pushed me to do TikTok. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Pauline, for, for doing this today. It was really great to have you, and I really enjoyed your demo. And again, thank you for the people who came and joined us. Thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, Kirsi and the SF Public Library. Very honored to do this for Filipino American History Month. Yay. Yes, thank you guys. So, all right, Pauline, I'll see you on the 22nd at your uh, your booth. All and right. Thank you again. Bye, thank everyone. you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you.